Uh, what I want to talk about just briefly here was lenses and we've done all the options now for mirrors and lenses. Now we've done the diagrams, you've looked at Descartes formula, we've got to look at another formula which is called um, Newton's formula and um, we'll get to that. But just first on the whole lens issue, what I wanted to talk about was refraction. So we've got a converging lens these lenses make the light converge as they, you can call them convex because they bulge out or you could just say converging so if I put a focal point there and I put a focal point there let's have an object here now what determines the what determines the um, size of the images to a certain degree remember what we found is as we brought the object in closer actually when we brought it in closer than the focal point if that's the focal point we found that it actually produced a virtual image and when it was and when it was like that it was an enlarged virtual image so that's the magnifying setup for this type of lens but what determines the focal length here is the curvature right so it's the curvature that 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 does that and so what's going on inside this lens is refraction and if you remember the um, pinhole camera where we had just a hole and we could have our object and we could have a screen and you ended up with this object on the back and we said well that's really nice but if we make the hole bigger we lose our image and as we make it smaller we lose our brightness now the nice thing about a lens okay is that it actually causes um, the creation of your image and it's big and wide and bright. So these surfaces are precisely polished down to give the right amount of refraction for a ray striking it, no matter where, parallel, to put it through the focal point. So obviously, let's have a look at this from the point of view of one surface. Surface like that, if you like. As the ray comes along, that's just the middle part. But if a ray does go through, it's going to go through the middle. So that's cool. What about a ray hitting there? Where's the normal? Okay, it's about there. Okay, so as it goes through there, it's going to bend towards the normal, right? And that's going to give us, and we know parallel that it's going to bend towards the normal to go through that focal point. What if it comes along there? We've got another normal, it's going to bend, and this time it bends to get through there. Same here. So it's all matched perfectly to keep these rays going through the focal point, right? Um, this is all bending towards the normal, which you learn in refraction. So what if the refractive index here, N of the glass, is bigger? If N is bigger, then we're going to get this focal point moved back here, right? What's that going to do? <clears throat> What's that going to do to the image size? All right, and this is where we can look at our little equations and go, okay, what will it do to the image size? If we've got our object at the same location, all right, so we've got one over f equals one over d i plus one over d naught. So if we make a smaller focal length. Um, and we might actually, that's the equation we'd use to solve this, but let's just do it diagrammatically. And I think we can do it by going back to our original diagram. Let's go back to this one. Let's have a focal point that is, say, I don't know, let's make it, that one's five. We'll make one just four if you like. So we'll make one, one centimeter there. So as we make our focal length smaller, it's going to cause more divert more convergence right so let's see what that does to the actual image size so with the first one we have an image size let's just go through the oh, it's too close but we'll go with it we come across here all right this is the actually absolutely the easiest way to do this one i'd say we can already see no not liking it let's just make our object let's get it further back we can use the same bit of paper 
This was pretty similar to a question that again came up. So I don't want to actually use this one. What I want to do is go further back. So I think I'll just use a different bit of paper. And we'll see what happens. We could do this mathematically, but I think this is more clear. So we've got our central line. We've got our lens. It's a converging lens. And all we're asking is, what happens if we make the focal length smaller? So we'll make our image from the same place for both of them. First thing we'll do is the five. This is going to work better. Right, like that, and like that. Now, this one's going to go there and there. So that's through the five. So that's our image. Now, what if we go through the four? What's going to happen? Goes like that, which gives us this one. And it comes along here the same way, but this time it's going to come down further. So you can see what it did. Making the focal length smaller, right? You can see making the focal length smaller brought the image in closer and made it smaller. All right? So these are the sort of questions you can answer by doing that. And how did we make the focal length smaller? By increasing the refractive index inside the lens. All right.